Hey everybody, Gravy Train here with another episode of Gravy Training. This one is a mechanic spotlight on enabler runes. So these just came out with the last event, uh, so it's been about a week. They are very, very good, very, very useful. So I'm going to go over what they are, how to use them, and who to use them with. All right, so what we've got, just this, what we've got is there are three colors of enabler runes, two colors for most people right now, um, myself included. For once, I actually didn't get the event reward um, because I was lazy this event. So there are purple that you were able to buy for gems in the store. There were uh, yellow that you were able to buy with um, event tickets. And there are red if you were one of the people that placed in like the top 10 for the, the event. So only 10 of you will have red ones. Maybe not even 10 because I doubt all 10 people that, that placed actually won or, or are part of the community. So um, yeah, most of you probably won't have the red ones. Like I said, I don't either. So for once, we're all in the same boat. Uh, but yeah, this is what they are. So an enabler rune has a... It, it has whatever its main three stats are, but the enabler part of it is it's a plus 25% chance to make an epic attack. That stacks on top of the 30% that already exists. So on a basic attack... And I had heard that they eliminated epic proc chances on follow-up attacks. So it's only like if you've initiated a basic attack with the character. That's not confirmed, but it's been my experience that that's accurate. And I think that's good. Um, it was kind of OP to have epics proccing on follow attacks. So... What you end up getting is you use a basic attack and you increase the chance for the epic to proc by 20%. So one rune at, or zero runes is 30%. One rune, 55%. Two runes, 80%. Three runes, 105%. So you can actually get a guaranteed epic every time. I run usually about 80%, so I try to get two runes on the heroes that I really want, like Ponty has two, um, etc. So most heroes I try to put two on if I'm really concerned about them using it. So first of all, you can only equip them on heroes that have an epic. So And not that they, they have to have the epic unlocked. And, and unlocked, and you have to have at least the first piece. So you can't just throw it on a hero that you haven't gotten their epic or anything like that, because the epic wouldn't proc. Um, second, like I said, this only works on basic attacks. Uh, so you want to be conscious of the activated power, the effect that you get with the third, or with, with your epic proc. So, for example, Pontifex Mortis has one of the best epic procs in the game. He's got a 30% chance, well, he has an 80% chance to deal 2x lightning damage to all enemies, bonus versus armored, diseases and marks all enemies with Gravedigger for three turns. So, you're doing double, double damage lightning damage to all enemies. It's lightning damage, so if you're on a team with Jin, it's going to prompt Jin follow-ups. Doing more damage to Armored, and also make sure that if they purged or cleared the disease, they get diseased again. And they all get marked with Gravedigger, so as long as Gravedigger is working, it will, when they die, they'll do damage to other people. So yeah, um, Ponty is probably the single best hero to put this on. So I'm going to kind of go through a list, and I've got a list that I had put together kind of for my guildmates and all that. Um, 
So Ponty is an obvious choice. Shade is a good choice. Um, we'll just do it this way. So it's only a single target, but it's a 30% chance. So however much you would add to him, and I am using him, it's a, like an 80% chance to, to attack for 2x damage, fear, and shroud dark allies for a turn. So round two or round three or round four, you have a chance to make sure that um, that you can gain Shroud effectively again. So that was definitely a nice one, plus the double damage on Shade is always nice. Lily, 30% chance to attack for 3x damage, grow allied plants, and nature allies become plants until the end of the dungeon. Heals allies for a percentage of the damage dealt. So that, clearly, Lily is a good choice. You would think that Jin is a good choice, but he's not. Um, and the reason being, unless you're using Jin without anybody that's doing electrical damage, so that he's kind of like working on his own, Jin should almost always be, I mean, he's silence immune, except for round one, where the silence can be overridden. There's only an edge case where he won't be, where he would still be silenced on his turn. So you're effectively going to get one turn out of a match that he might have an occasion to do an epic proc. Um, and he because he doesn't do epic procs on follow-up attacks, there's absolutely no reason to put one on Jin. Keep cranking his damage and, and all of that. <laughs> Bramble, if you're running a goblin team, sure. Otherwise, you're not even going to use Bramble. Burnus, um, absolutely a good, a good choice. 30% chance to attack all enemies for 2x damage with a chance to apply a random burn on all enemies and wound the target. Deals additional damage based on pressure. So, yeah, you can put Soul Fire Burn, you can put Demon Fire Burn, you can put Burn, you can put Wildfire Burn, all that stuff. So, 30% chance to attack everybody plus apply a burn tells yes. Aria, 30% chance to deal 2x damage to target enemy or 4x on a counter. So I have to assume that on a counter attack, it can proc the epic. Um, but not on a follow-up attack. Otherwise, that just completely breaks her epic. So if you're using Aria, it could definitely be possible. All of the snakes. All of the snakes. So good with this with the enabler rune. So 30% chance to attack for 2x damage and add 8 venom. Awesome. That's, I think, 8 venom on each target. Or, I, I no, I guess it's only one target, but still. So you're going to attack for double damage and add 8 venom. Awesome. Hensuke, 30% chance to deal 3x damage and buff team defense. Yes. And Hansuke, well... Hansuke, you, you're not going to get it on the follow-up attacks. You will probably get it on revenge attacks, though. And you'll get it on basic attacks if he's silenced or doesn't have any abilities up or anything like that. Jabber? No. Uh, Squinchy? No. Chillwin? Or uh, Selwyn? Yes. So think about this. You put 80% or, yeah, you get him up to 80% chance to do 3x damage and Frostbite, and then he enters Ice Block again. So he starts the dungeon in Ice Block. He attacks with a basic attack, procs for 3x damage, and then he's back at Ice Block. Pops out and back in. 80% of the time, it works every time. Um, I mean, he doesn't do metric tons of damage. He does decent damage, but you can keep him alive and just pop out, pop back, pop out, pop back. But chill win, sell win, definitely a choice. Nitpick, 30% chance to do a ranged fire attack for 3x damage. Burn and add a pyromaniac buff to allies. Yes, useful. Willow. If you're using Willow, sure. I would not go out of my way to use Willow. 
Augustus. Once again, if you're using Augustus, great, it's viable. If you're not, why are you using Augustus? Rogar, 30% chance to daze and do 3x damage. That's only on a single target. I wouldn't waste one on him. Falcon, so because of the changes to Falcon's epic, I would only do this if you're running a full team of dwarves, or like three dwarves, because his haste is only going to go on dwarf allies now, um, which is excellent, like it shouldn't be on any more than that. Um, but yeah, so if you're using a dwarf team, you can put one on him. I wouldn't put more than one. Um... Grognog. Grognog's a decent choice. Um, if he's a focus of your team and you have really high offense on him, he's great. Igarok. So 30% chance to deal 2x damage and AoE, so splash damage, and adds freezing skin for all water allies. If you're running an Igarok team or an Igarok team, yeah, it's worth it. Cobalt. So if you're running Cobalt, which I know he's still not perfect yet, but if you get the, the, the biggest problem with Cobalt is that there are only purple arcane runes. So you've got purple enabler runes if you were to put two purple enabler runes on him, because obviously you can't equip light, light runes. So you've got two purple enabler runes, and... You then don't have a way to put arcane runes on him. Arcane runes are really needed to make him viable. So if they release other colors of enabler runes or other colors of arcane runes, that would be the ideal. And he would definitely be useful then. Torchy. Uh, Stone Fist, yes. So, chance to deal 2x damage, splash damage, and purge one buff on all enemies. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Uh, Yasmin, I mean, if you're using Yasmin, great, but cleansing regeneration, meh. Um, deal 2x damage, Yasmin. Zola, awesome, absolutely awesome on Zola, just devastating on Zola. 30% chance to deal 2x damage and stone the target, gaining invincibility. Hells, yes. Um, especially on a team with at least one other Gorgon, get some people with... Um, Reptile runes on them, like Krex and Creel, with reptile runes on them. Oh, ha, 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 ha. drool. Uh, Tsumi, yeah. I mean, if you're running a team with Tsumi on him, like a demon team, something like that, I think this might actually make him more viable. So it's going to be an increased chance to reduce Tsumi's health to 15%, attack for 100% life steal. So what this does, because his... The lower his health is, the more damage he does. So you're boosting your damage massively. And then, ideally, life-stealing all of it, so you'll get your health back. Uh -huh. Emily, you could. I think there's better choices, but you could. I mean, it would, if you want to make a really survivable Emily that can deal damage and, um, and then heal, heal all of it, then Emily is potentially viable. Hopper, no. Ice Bloom, yes. Um, I mean, for her to automatically get invincibility, especially since her abilities are so long to come back up, yeah. Viperia, yes. Absolutely, yes. 30% chance to deal 2x damage, add 4 Venom. Each reptile attacks the same enemy. That right there... Yeah, they're done. They're done. That hero that you're attacking is going to be stoned and going to be dead. Um, Matsu, 
if you're really determined to get nerve damage up, but that's only one one hero. I really wouldn't use it on Matsu. Baron, yes, 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 yes. Um, so he's got a thirty percent chance to do two X damage, splash damage, and wound all enemies hit. The big thing is it's splash damage. So every time he's silenced, <laughs> or just you decide you're not going to use an ability, he's just dropping bombs that are exploding for double damage, double therand damage, and doing AE. You really can't beat that. And shield piercing goes through flash damage. Yes, please. I've tried it. It works great. Dagrand, um, yeah, you can do it on Dagrand. 30% chance to deal 3x damage, and life steals a percentage of the damage dealt for all allies. It's a great healing attack. If he doesn't have anything better to do, I mean, yeah, it's definitely viable. Abigail, yes. Chance to attack up to three enemies for 1.5x damage, daze, and burn. So, yeah, she'll... Just go on a little rampage. Definitely worth it. Lupina. Bovis. I mean, if you're using a beast team, yeah. That's about it. <laughs> Nimriel. Uh, um, if you're doing a burn team, probably. Because she can't miss burning enemies. I think she gets Yeah, she can't or they can't be dodged. She gets an energy and haste after a killing blow. Chance to wound. Buffs. So it's definitely viable because if you're getting burnout on people, um we gotta throw her on a team with Furnace. And yeah, that, that could actually be decent. Um, and then on top of that, she's getting bonus damage for each debuff on targets. Yeah. Um, or throw her out there with like Archon and Furnace and Zulk. Not bad. SB, 30% chance to do a critical attack for 1.25x damage. Death Blows grants an additional diseasing attack. It's worth it on him. Rom, yes, 30% chance to deal 3x unhealable damage and haunt on hit. So that's on a single target. That's 3x damage. Unhealable. Yeah, that's worth it. Pygmius, yes. It actually would make Pygneus. I think that makes Pygneus viable. 30% chance to deal 3x damage and burn the target. Allies gain bonus attack, defense, and crit. That is actually worthwhile. Uh, Takumi. 30% chance to purge all buffs on target and then do a shield piercing attack for 2x damage with the chance to freeze. Yeah, it's definitely viable. Yorick, if you're using Yorick, 30% chance to deal 3x damage and heal undead allies. Meh. Black Diamond, yes. 30% chance to deal 2x damage and add 50% crit damage to all allies. Yes. Yes, yes. Nub Nub, if you're running Nub Nub or Goblins. Yeah, 30% chance to cleanse allies. That means you're going to get rid of all debuffs. Attack for 1.5 damage and add a plus defense buff to all goblin allies. Echo, yes. 30% chance to do a ranged lightning attack for 2x damage, shock, and steal 2 energy from a target. Definitely worth it. And that's all the epics. So let me show you just how good teams using this can be. So I am going to be running Ponty. Um, and actually, what I'll do is I'm going to throw shade in here. I'm going to throw some shade, y'all. Um, yeah, lame. I know. Um, 
I'm going to throw Shade in here. Shade does have the boost. Um, Ponty has the boost. Agnon. Uh, or actually, you know what? I'm going to use, I'm going to throw, uh, let's use this team that I built, purpose built for this. I know I removed him off of him. Um, sorry, I'm thinking we'll do Shade, Ponty, Agnon, and Jin. So I've got him on these two, and you can see the effect. And I'm not going to do a bunch of battles. I just want you to kind of see just how good this can be. So Shade, I'm going to do a basic attack here. Ponty, I'm going to do a basic attack here. Agnon, I'm going to do Thunder um, or Terror Storm. Now I've used one special ability and three out of the four heroes are dead. So this is one of the rare cases where Jin could have actually used it, whatever. So I'm going to throw because I know that uh, Lily is going to end up getting haste and crap like that and I don't want her to build anything up. So I'm going to throw lifelink on her and I'm going to hit her for 12,000. He's heavily defensive, that's fine. I should have waited on the lifelink. Um, yeah, I'm not in danger, but I should have probably waited for that. Because she gets all dodgy and it's annoying. Really can't possess it. Oh, Phoenix Feathers. Damn it. Alright, so there we go. That one didn't go quite as easily as it could have because I made a little mistake with the timing. But let's do one more battle and then we'll call it. Alright, 54, 5500. 5, not the toughest ever, but not bad. Um, I'm just going to basic attack the exam. I'm just going to basic attack again. The nice thing about this too is if you're basic attacking round one or round one and round two, you don't actually have to have as many festives too, so you can focus on damage dealing abilities. One round, two specials, that's it. So that's the power of enablement runes. On the right heroes and the right teams, that's going to be your power. So if you liked the video, hit a thumbs up. Um, mash that like button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Remember the Discord link is in the description. Um, so join that, join the community. I answer questions there. Let you know about stuff that's coming up. Uh, just shoot the shit, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. See you next time.